is TikTok spying on you? This may actually be the case. TikTok is facing a ban inside the United States and their CEO had to appear in front of the United States Congress to face very difficult and critical questions. You are watching Slow News, the citizen's journalist counterpart to the biased and shallow copy-paste journalism of corporate media. Today, we're gonna have a close look at the story behind the headlines regarding TikTok. Before we get to that, however, if you're a fan of independent news, consider subscribing and we're gonna jump right into it. So TikTok CEO Cao Tsi Chu had to appear in front of US Congress and give answer to numerous questions regarding supposed espionage of TikTok on US citizens and sharing data with their mother house ByteDance, which is located in China and supposedly being controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. Why would a current TikTok employee say this if it wasn't true? Do you realize that making false and misleading statements to Congress is a federal crime? It does anyone who have access to user data are they members of the Chinese Communist Party? Not so long ago, then President Donald Trump had signed an executive order attempting to ban TikTok in the United States. Trump's plans, however, were halted by a federal judge named Carl Nicholas of the US District Court of Columbia, and President Biden would later revoke the executive order completely once he took control of the Oval Office. While some argue that TikTok doesn't really spy any more on users than other social media platforms and apps, and Al Jazeera actually calling hypocrisy on the United States, since Google, the search engine, and uh, platforms such as Meta are actually spying far more on non-US citizens, according to Al Jazeera, than TikTok spies on non-Chinese citizens, the question remains, is the United States government actually concerned with TikTok collecting data for commercial purposes, or is there more to the story? Let's see what the FBI has to say about the subject. The FBI claims that the Chinese government is applying tactics to seek to influence US policy makers, make decisions which are more favorable for the Chinese state. So FBI Director Christopher Wray has answered when asked about the primary concerns regarding TikTok that they have the potential to wage an information war against the public, against the United States, by programming their algorithm in a way that suggests videos with content that is favorable to China. And they are also able to collect data for traditional espionage. We, the FBI, do have um, national security concerns uh, about the app. Uh, its uh, parent company is controlled by the Chinese government. It's precisely for these reasons that India has already banned more than 250 Chinese apps. One of them, of course, is TikTok, for reasons of national security. A country such as France and Australia are banning TikTok for government officials and employees, fearing espionage from the Chinese government. You may recall there has been similar concerns regarding the corporation Huawei, the Chinese-based smartphone producer, in recent years. So here we have the TikTok CEO answering a question of a congressman regarding possible backdoors in TikTok's source code. He flatly denies that any data is being shared with the CCP. What is shocking to me is the shared source code between TikTok in the United States and the CCP-centered Doan. TikTok source code is riddled with backdoors and CCP censorship devices. I have seen no evidence that the Chinese government has access to that data. Now, I cannot verify any of this because I do not have access to the source code for one, and number two, I lack the knowledge to actually check it out, even if I had access. But there certainly is a valid and alleged concern regarding data sharing through ByteDance, which is located in China, because in 2017, there was a law being passed, which actually makes it mandatory for Chinese corporations and organizations to cooperate with Chinese intelligence. So most notably, inside the law, the most problematic articles are articles 7 and 10, which read the following. Article 7, 
all organizations and citizens shall support, assist and cooperate with national intelligence efforts in accordance with law and shall protect national intelligence work secrets they are aware of. And Article 10 reads as follows, as necessary for their work, national intelligence work institutions are to use the necessary means, tactics and channels to carry out intelligence domestically and abroad. So in other words, Chinese companies can be forced by their intelligence apparatus to support spying on other countries, other organizations or individuals. It's pretty huge. So apart from this law, China is strictly controlled by the CCP and there is a one-party system. There is a lack of a conflict of ideas in the public. There is no public debate and there is a highly censored internet. There's no free journalism either. Now, it's very dangerous to go against the Chinese government, of course, within China. Even slight criticism of the party line can have dire consequences. The list of influential and rich people who have disappeared, sometimes for months or forever, is quite long. The most notable example for us in the West certainly is Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba, who has disappeared for several months after criticizing regulations. What many Westerners do not realize is that Jack Ma is a star in China. Not only because he's a billionaire and very influential, he is a literal movie star. He is a kung fu movie star. Let's have a look at that. Now, obviously, because of the size of Jack Ma, his criticism of Chinese regulations have been perceived by the government as a huge threat, and he disappeared for several months to cooperate with authorities. Apparently, he is now exiled to Japan. So it all boils down to the CCP versus the United States and countries such as India and others. Let's have a quick look at the history and the power structure of the CCP. The Communist Party of China was founded in 1921 as a political party and revolutionary movement by Chinese intellectuals who were inspired by Marxism. During the 1920s and 30s, the party grew in strength, winning support from peasants and organizing labor unions in cities. The CCP joined forces with the Nationalist Party in 1924, but the two parties would later become enemies, leading to the CCP being driven underground. During this time, many CCP cadres went to the countryside to organize peasants and Mao Zedong emerged as the party's leader. The CCP joined forces again with the Nationalist Party during World War II to fight off the Japanese invaders. After the war, the CCP won the Chinese Civil War against the Nationalists who were supported by the United States and the Nationalists were forced to exile and flee to Taiwan. And the People's Republic of China was founded in 1949. The CCP adopted the Soviet model for development but soon found itself at odds with the Communist Party of the Soviet Union over foreign policy and ideology. The CCP implemented several programs to hasten China's industrial development with mixed results. In 1966, Mao launched the Cultural Revolution, which led to struggles between the CCP's radical and pragmatic wings. After Mao's death then, Deng Xiaoping assumed paramount power and implemented a program of the four modernizations. The CCP structure includes a National Party Congress, a Central Committee, a Political Bureau and a Standing Committee, which is the highest echelon of the leadership in the CCP and the country. 
So the bigger picture is the war for superpower status between the United States and China. This is the common denominator of all the buzz regarding Huawei, the Taiwan Strait issue and now TikTok. Now China has a new strongman, Xi Jinping, who may be called the Mao 2.0 and just like Putin functions as a total dictator. So China is aggressively trying to uphold and expand its sphere of influence sometimes in violation of international laws such as the law of the sea which the united states is trying to uphold in the taiwan strait which is one of many issues regarding taiwan china is also aiming to become the economic power number one in the world and militarily speaking they are constantly sizing up their military to compete with the United States. Now, since the CCP is a communist party based on communist ideology, they, like every extreme ideology, need enemies. All extremists are always defined by what they hate. Now, from spy balloons to the Taiwan Strait issue and the hidden arms deliveries to Russia, China continues to challenge US hegemony. Now, Trump may not have succeeded with his anti-Chinese policies. What he did achieve, however, is the anti-Chinese sentiment in the West. Most people now feel that China needs to be regarded as a potential enemy. It's very dangerous because there is a real potential of an armed confrontation between the United States and China, which are two nuclear powers. It would be a disaster for the world. There's going to be a need for diplomacy and the willingness to compromise on both ends to prevent such a conflict. We are at the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for sticking around until the end. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and check out this video that I made about the Nord Stream incident recently. And if you have any suggestions, any proposition, send me an email to the address below. I'll check it out. It can be your show. That being said, See you again in about two weeks. Take care.